speaking of disappointing Jesus, I would like to talk about the new HBO documentary that just came out, Brandy Hellville. <coughs> Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here to my channel, I am so happy that you're here. If you are a returning subscriber, I'm extra happy that you're here. Brandy Melville is a brand geared towards like teenage young adult girls, probably like middle school to 20 years old. They sell one size fits all clothing that is extremely expensive and made in Italy. It's made to sound like it might be a luxurious, but it's actually a fast fashion company. They have a very, very, very specific brand image that they look for. You have to be very, very tiny. You have to be tall. You have to be white. And that is the brandy image. So this documentary kind of cracks open the Pandora's box of the real atrocities of what happened at this company. They have not really been secretive about the fact that they have a very shitty business practice and they know it works, which is why they're never going to apologize for it and they're never going to address it. They are put on a pedestal by their customer base. The way that they like built their brand is by not doing any kind of advertising, by not doing commercials. They wanted to make it very exclusive. One specific size, very, very high price point. They don't advertise so you can only really find out about it if you hear about it from somebody else. Then they will have these influencers come on to like YouTube and Instagram and stuff and make all of these brandy hauls and make it like a really, really sought after brand that all of these girls want to wear because their favorite influencers and YouTubers and all of these people are wearing it. There's the branding itself, Brandy Melville, which is kind of made to sound like it might be a designer name, even though Brandy Melville isn't a person who exists. Brandy and Melville are two people. They're fictional characters. Brandy is an American and Melville is an Englishman and they like fall in love. Brandy Melville was kind of an odd name choice, but it added kind of a layer of exclusivity to their brand. They kind of sounded like a designer. To go into a Brandy Melville establishment, the culture and environment there was just like hoity fucking toity. You walk in and you just feel the laser stare of the girls who work there and you know that you're not supposed to be in there. Like they are deliberately told to kind of like ice out people they know will not fit into their clothing. I am 5'11 and obviously not Brandy Melville sized. They do not want people shopping there who do not belong in their clothes. I had never even heard of Brandy Melville until after I had graduated high school. It was not a thing in my high school. I don't know. It just, it didn't have as much of a grip. In my high school, it was more like Hollister and American Eagle and those were the places that you went to get everything if you were really popular and maybe like you had a pair of Uggs and Miss Me jeans. Brandy Melville was not something that I thought was like a huge cultural phenomenon until I started watching like Hailey Pham and Emma Chamberlain and they talked about it all the time on their YouTube channels and I was like, oh, okay, I guess this is like a thing. So it's interesting to watch this phenomenon as somebody who grew up more in the age of like Abercrombie and Fitch and Hollister and American Eagle and like they had a lot of these same issues that Brandy Melville had. Abercrombie was kind of like my Brandy Melville growing up. Like they had very exclusive sizing. They deliberately didn't donate any of their clothing to people in the States. They didn't want to see the Abercrombie clothing in a goodwill or anything like that. Like they were very, very problematic and racist. I know that there was a girl who didn't get hired to work there because she she was a hijabi and they tried to say that they wouldn't hire her because her hijab was not company policy and because it wasn't in the dress code. Went all the way up to the Supreme Court. They had a lot of these same issues that Brandy Melville has, you know? This kind of exclusive branding really gives Brandy Melville an excuse to be intolerant and racist and homophobic and transphobic. They specifically want tall, conventionally attractive, white, young, skinny girls. That is the thing that you have to be to work at a brandy. And if you are not white, you are at least skinny, tall, and conventionally attractive. But if you are not white, you are probably going to be working at the counter or you're gonna be working in the back where you're not directly interacting with like anybody. This was something that was really noticed by everybody who worked there, but nobody ever said anything about it. Alongside this kind of dynamic happening in these storefronts, the CEO of the company, Stefan Marsan, had a group chat with like all of these other Brandy Melville employees. They would be exchanging these like really disturbing. It's like Stefan Marsan Sean spends a lot of time on 4chan. He has edgelord humor. Like he thinks he's edgy. 
And all of these things that he's sending in this chat are like anti-Semitic, racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, every single thing that you can possibly imagine. He thinks it's hilarious. Like he expects everybody to laugh along with him as he sends these to his, these are his colleagues. Like these are his coworkers that he's sending these like pictures of this girl barely covering her boobs. These really sexist things. Presumably a lot of these people who are the higher ups are older men. The top of the food chain is controlling all of these like young girls down at the bottom and it's super fucking weird. It makes it even more disturbing when you think about like how big of a skis and how creepy Stefan Marsan really is. If you're actually close with him outside of a group chat, what kinds of things does he talk about, you know? He is a fierce libertarian Trump supporter, vehemently against taxes. When Brandy Melville was first starting out, he would encourage this like libertarian piece of literature to be put all around the stores. And people joked that it was called like the Brandy Melville Bible. There was even a second store that Stefan Marsan owned called John Galt. And John Galt was like a character from this libertarian book. All of these teenage girls were gonna be like, John Galt probably also was some kind of designer. But no, he really, really, really belittled all of his employees who did not agree with what he believed. He was requiring these teenage girls who work for him to send him pictures of their outfits for approval every single day. He keeps all of these images. They do not care how old you are, it seems. They don't really care about if you have any working skills. This one worker said there was this girl who was mopping the floors, but she didn't put a pad on the mop, so she was just like scraping the plastic on the concrete. These people, like, they don't have work skills. And then, once you are hired as a Brandy Melville employee, you are then required to take your picture of your whole outfit every single day and send it to the CEO of the company. Your chest and your feet and your whole body. And if he doesn't like your outfit, you get fired. Fired! And then if he does like your outfit, it's used for like marketing research or whatever. And he keeps all of the pictures. He keeps them all. He has them like all in a folder. All of these like young minor girls. Like that is so creepy. Like what is he doing with these images? These girls, they don't know where their images are going. They don't know what these pictures are doing. They just take them and send them because that's like what they're supposed to do. We have haven't even gotten to the environmental impact that this place has had on the world. Brandy Melville brands themselves as a luxury business. They brand themselves as exclusive, designer, expensive. Their products are sourced from the biggest textile industry in all of Europe and Italy. A lot of the textile factories there are not high quality designer textile factories. They're just textile factories that are just as shitty as any other textile factory in any other place. Textile factories do all kinds of damage to our environment. Producing and manufacturing textiles is very, very harmful. And then once these textiles are produced, they are made into clothing using exploitative labor for pennies. Then these very cheaply made clothes are shipped to all of the Brandy Melvilles and more than half of it is discarded. That is how fast the trend cycles change. Brandy will see something on somebody's body and then they will ask for the article of clothing so that they can steal the design and then they will have it out on the floor within like two seconds. They take the old stuff out just as soon as it was put out on the floor. But then what happens to all of these clothes that are discarded? They're not donated to places in the States. They are shipped overseas to Ghana. We saw in the documentary the completely devastating environmental impact these fast fashion companies have had on Ghana. Their entire coastline is shreds of fabric. Their entire shore is just floating pieces of fabric. Their entire streets are lined with enormous piles of clothing that people are trying to sell for pennies. They have more clothing than there are people in the country. They don't have enough to do things with. They can't do anything with these materials. The materials they're made from are incredibly inexpensive so they can't even like use the things that they're given. Most of it gets discarded and is put out into the ocean or burned. All of these countries in Africa who have this deal with America to accept imports of clothing in exchange for things like grants and aid. And you realize that if they don't accept these things, they also, they don't get the aid. Every single person involved with Brandy Melville and all of these fast fashion companies, Shein, Romwe, Timu. Every single level is exploited except for the people who own the company itself. The people making the textiles, the environment, 
the people who receive the discarded clothing, the teenagers who are made to be doing the jobs of multiple adults for pennies, the consumer themselves who are being sold a shitty product for so much money, being told that it's an expensive, luxury, high quality good, and then it falls apart right after you get it. You've wasted so much money. So many people who are being exploited. It's so heartbreaking to watch in real time because you know that like, if we talk about one company, we have to talk about all of the companies. Brandy Melville is not the only fast fashion company. Brandy Melville is not the only company that exploits workers at every single level. Brandy Melville is not the only company that exploits consumers. Brandy Melville is not the only company that has a creep as a CEO. And I think that it's really interesting that we've been talking so much about child exploitation and like all of these children that are being made to work because we're really starting to talk more about what is exploitation? How do we know when somebody is being exploited. Quiet on Set had its own issues as a documentary, but it did open up a lot of conversation about child exploitation and exploitation in the workplace and what happens when you put children in charge of something that's worth millions of dollars and that the effect that it can have on them. There is so much conversation to be had about the damage child exploitation causes across the board because it's not just Brandy Melville, it's also Nickelodeon, it's also Jojo Siwa, it's also people like Ruby Frankie. I'm really glad Glad that people are now talking about the damage that things like this really cause, like generationally, like Brandy Melville had a cultural impact on young girls during a time where it was really important to have a thigh gap and be skinny and people were making all of these like raw vegan what I eat in a day videos where like I genuinely thought at that point in my life that like I needed to exclusively eat zucchini and avocado. And I really hope that we start to see some more documentaries and things come out about things like this in the future. I think that we need to be taking action. We need to be learning how to make our own clothes. We need to be learning how to ethically source our materials. We need to be learning how to be environmentally conscious when we shop. We need to learn how to know when we as consumers are being exploited so that we don't fall into traps financially or cycles of buying the same thing over and over and over and over and over again because that is a form of exploitation. I really hope that the coming teenage children who are growing up will have some more inclusive brands who are more willing and able to cater to a large audience. Those are kind of my thoughts on Brandy Melville. It's a shitty company. They did not really try to hide that from us. I know some people don't really have a choice when it comes to sizing or like a very specific thing that they need or whatever. Like once in a while there will probably inevitably be a time where you're like, oh my god, there's this one really specific thing that I need that I can't find affordably anywhere else and I literally have five dollars to my name. The only thing that I need right now is a five dollar pair of tissue paper pants from Shein. If you were somehow in a tissue paper pants related emergency and the only thing that you needed to survive was a pair of five dollar tissue paper pants from Shein, I'm sure that you are going to be be allowed into heaven. But if you are someone who is going to places like Brandy and being like, spend $500 at this store with me. Look at my huge giant haul of things that are going to be out of style in five days. Think about what you're doing. I am somebody who used to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on these giant Shein hauls when I was like 18 years old. And I look back on that and I'm like, first of all, I could have saved so much money. I could have saved so much money. Almost all of the things that I bought with all of that money are gone now. I still have really nice articles of clothing I purchased when I was in high school that still fit and are still holding up and are still really good quality. But then all of these things I purchased from fast fashion as an adult have completely fallen apart or stretched out or become otherwise unwearable in some way. They do not hold up. If you can shop ethically, if you can thrift, if you can give new life to old clothing before throwing them out, if you can donate to people that actually need it instead of just donating to something that might not actually be an ethical donation, keep that in mind when you're going about your fashion shopping clothing journey. If you want to give me a follow on here, and join my satanic death cult. I'm at like 6,000 devil worshipers on here right now. I'm trying to get to 6.6 thousand. We just passed 666,000 devil worshipers on my TikTok account. So if you wanna follow me over there, become a part of my cult. Subscribe, follow me on all of my social medias, drop your favorite flavor of Flavorade in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Peace and love.